A few months ago, I made a pair of videos breaking down the real world science behind the legendary Pokemon Kyogre and Groudon, and what would happen if Team Aqua and Team Magma were successful in their plans. And ever since then, people have been begging me to complete the trilogy. For those who don't know, Team Sky is not an official Pokemon team, but rather the creation of Michael from the channel MNJTV. And just like Team Aqua and Magma before them, their goal is to summon the legendary Titan Rayquaza to expand the sky itself! <laughs> Either that, or they just really like flying Pokemon, I can't really tell. But there is one thing that I know for certain. No Pokemon team is complete without a nerdy guy in glasses. So Michael, consider this my official application. This is the real world science of Team Sky. Richard, hit that intro. This video was voted on by all my supporters on Patreon. If you want to find out how you can get access to all sorts of cool perks like an exclusive Discord server, early access, and private live streams, then check the link in the description down below. These videos would not be possible without the support of all of you, so truly, thank you all so much. Alright, now it's time to do an unreasonable amount of science for the sake of a meme. So, you want to expand the sky? Well, before you can do that, we first need to define what the sky even is. Because it turns out it may not be as cut and dry as you think. Many dictionaries define the sky as any part of the atmosphere or outer space that can be seen from Earth. So, by that definition, the limits of the sky would be the furthest celestial object that we can see from Earth, which turns out to be the star known as Arendelle, which sits a cool 28 billion light years away. Which, you know, funny enough, I think is actually bloody big. But something tells me that's not what Team Sky meant. After all, the goal of Team Sky is to make more room for flying type Pokemon. Or, or, sorry, sorry, scratch that. Pokemon that can fly. And float, I guess. And Pokemon that will eventually evolve into something that can fly. Or float. Or Mighty Yenna for some reason. So I think a more reasonable definition of the sky for this video is Earth's atmosphere, which stretches from the Earth's surface to the edge of outer space. This is the area that aerial Pokemon could inhabit. Now, expanding the Earth's atmosphere is a bit tricky because, well, it already wraps all the way around the globe, so you can't expand it that way or that way or even that way. If you want to expand the sky, the only way you can go is up. So, in order to complete Team Sky's goal of expanding the sky, we must simply find a way to increase the height of the atmosphere. Sounds easy enough, only there's one problem. It turns out that defining the height of the atmosphere is a bit tricky. It's pretty common knowledge that Earth's atmosphere gets thinner and thinner the higher up you go. Or, in more scientific terms, the air density gets lower and lower. And when that density hits zero, congratulations, you're in space. But what you might not know is that air density doesn't decrease linearly. Rather, it decreases exponentially meaning that it will approach a value of zero, but never actually reach it. This means that, from a scientific perspective, there is no hard line that separates Earth's atmosphere from space. It theoretically stretches on forever. For that reason, a better way to describe the size of a planet's atmosphere is by using a factor called the scale height which is a measure of how high up you need to travel for the atmospheric pressure to decrease by a factor of 1 over E, 
or a little more than a third. Effectively, scale height is a measure of how much the atmosphere hugs a planet. A low scale height means that all the air of the atmosphere lies close to the surface, and the air pressure decreases rapidly as you go up. A high scale height means that pressure decreases slowly, and effectively, the sky extends further. So, in order to increase the size of the sky, we need to find a way to increase the scale height. Now, you could try calling upon Rayquaza to accomplish this, but that might not be your best course of action, seeing as its only canon ability seems to be saying, Hey, knock it off! I'm trying to sleep up here! God damn! But luckily, we don't need Rayquaza. Not when we have science. The scale height of a planet can be found using this formula. H is our scale height that we're looking for, R is the molar gas constant, which is just a set value of 8.314 followed by some complete nonsense for a unit. Uh, you don't gotta worry about all that today. T is the average surface temperature of the planet, and M is the mean molar mass of atmospheric particles. Moles are a little weird, but basically it's how much this many air particles would weigh. And lastly, G is the acceleration due to gravity on the planet in question, which comes from the mass of that planet. Let's use Earth as an example. The average surface temperature of Earth is 58.73 degrees Fahrenheit or 14.85 degrees Celsius. For this formula though, we need to use the black sheep of the temperature family and convert that to 288 degrees Kelvin. In order to find the mean molar mass, we need to take the weighted average of all the different molar masses for the individual molecules that make up Earth's atmosphere. So, in Earth's case, 78% of our atmosphere is comprised of nitrogen gas, which has a molar mass of 28.2 grams per mole. Oxygen makes up 21% of the atmosphere and has a molar mass of 32 grams per mole. Argon makes up 0.9% and has a molar mass of 39.948 grams per mole. And the remaining 0.1% is made up of other gases like water vapor, CO2, and methane, which have a combined average molar mass of around 26 grams per mole. If we simply multiply each molecule's molar mass by its percent makeup and add them all together, we can find that Earth's atmosphere has an average molar mass of 28.9 grams per mole. And lastly, G represents the acceleration due to gravity, and is a measure of how fast things fall. Here on Earth, G is equal to 9.8 meters per second squared. But on a place like the moon, where gravity is much lighter, G is much lower. So if we simply plug all those numbers into our formula, we can find that the scale height for Earth is 8,437.12 meters, or 5.24 miles. That's how high you'd need to travel for the atmosphere to become roughly a third as dense as it is on the surface. Great. Now comes the fun part. If you're looking to increase the scale height of the planet you're on, you got three options. The molar gas constant is a set property. Unless you're rewriting the laws of reality itself, that's not changing. So that just leaves increasing the temperature, decreasing the mean molar mass, or decreasing the pull of gravity. Let's say that Team Sky is feeling a bit ambitious and wants to double the scale height, and effectively double the height of the sky. Well, you could simply take a page out of Team Magma's book and double the average global temperatures from 288 Kelvin to 576 Kelvin. Grab Groudon, let him do his thing, and after letting your Earth bake for a few hundred years, you're good to go. However, as we learned in the Team Magma video, Increasing global temperatures by even a few degrees might have a couple of unintended consequences. So it might be wisest to leave the temperature alone. 
Instead, you could try to change the mean molar mass by physically altering the chemical makeup of our atmosphere. Remember, we calculated the mean molar mass by multiplying each molecule's molar mass by its percent makeup. You could simply replace those heavier molecules like nitrogen and oxygen with a much lighter one like, say, hydrogen, which only has a molar mass of 2.016 grams per mole. If you could have the mean molar mass from 28.9 to 14.45 grams per mole, then mission accomplished. The sky is now doubled. However, if your goal is to help flying Pokemon thrive, this might not be your best course of action either. See, changing the makeup of our atmosphere will also change the air pressure. Air pressure is simply the weight of all the air molecules above you, and if you replace all the heavy molecules with lighter hydrogen, then you're going to have a much lighter atmosphere, and therefore far lower air pressure. And having a high air pressure is pretty important for our respiratory system. We often think of inhaling as sucking air in, but it turns out that it's actually the opposite. When you take a breath, your diaphragm contracts, giving your lungs more space to expand. Because the air pressure of the atmosphere is higher than the air pressure within your lungs, the atmosphere actually pushes air into your lungs, which allows you to breathe. This is why some people experience altitude sickness. As you go higher up, there's less air on top of you, meaning the air pressure is lower and it's more difficult to take in air. Reducing global air pressure would make it more difficult for all Pokemon, birds and Mightyena included, to survive. Birds have also been known to be super sensitive to changes in air pressure, which can cause all sorts of issues with their flight patterns. And also, probably should have mentioned this one first, but replacing all the oxygen in the air with hydrogen makes it pretty difficult for any Pokwa that needs to breathe oxygen to survive. Which, you know, is basically all of them. Alright, so temperature and atmospheric composition were sort of a bust, but fear not! There is still one more option. If we simply find a way to decrease the acceleration due to gravity, we could not only increase the height of the sky, but also gain the ability to leap high into the air like we're on the moon and join our flying brethren for but a moment. It's a win-win. So, how do we do that? Well, the acceleration due to gravity for a given planet can be found using this formula. G is another constant, this time the gravitational constant. M is the mass of the planet in question, and R is the radius, or the distance from the center of the planet to wherever you are, probably the surface. Since R is solely dependent on the place you are measuring from, the only way to reduce the gravitational pull of a planet is by reducing its mass. And so, ironically enough, if you want to expand the sky, you gotta grab a shovel. The mass of a planet is basically the combined matter of everything in it. So if you want to reduce the mass, you gotta get rid of all that matter. Now, you want to be careful here because if you lower the height of the ground level, you're reducing the distance to the center of mass, which increases gravity by a power of two, which we don't want. Instead, your best bet is to hollow that sucker out and launch all that excess material into space. Earth currently has a mass of 5.97 times 10 to the 24th kilograms. In order to double the height of the sky, you'd need to remove half of all that mass, or nearly 3 octillion kilograms of dirt and rock, enough to create 40 new moons. That is more mass than the entirety of Earth's crust, meaning that you'd have to end up digging out a significant portion of Earth's mantle, the molten hot layer of silicate rock that lies deep below the surface. What are the effects of digging this deep? Well, as it turns out, 
We don't know because we've never done it before. Assuming Team Sky did have the resources, funding, and time to dig down that far all around the world, we really have no way of knowing what would happen. It could create a network of super volcanoes spewing 1,800 degree rock up onto the surface, or they might effectively halt all seismic activity and stop any future earthquakes from occurring. You just gotta watch out for a couple of potholes here and there. And also, it's almost certainly that first one. But, if you manage to successfully remove half of all the matter on Earth, then congratulations! You have officially doubled the height of the sky. Another W for Team Sky! So, there you have it. If you want to expand the sky, you must simply increase global temperatures far beyond the point that could sustain life on Earth as we know it, alter the molecular makeup of the atmosphere to the point where no living being could breathe, or find a way to hollow out half the Earth without condemning everyone and everything to a fiery death. You're welcome, Michael. Of course, there is another way. An easier and far less ecologically devastating way to expand the sky. It does require some methods that are a bit more, uh, shall we say, nefarious. But this is an evil team after all. We're not limited by petty morality. At the start of the video, I mentioned that defining the limit between outer space and Earth's atmosphere is tricky. Because while technically Earth's atmosphere does extend indefinitely, realistically, there is an end. The Andromeda Galaxy isn't in our atmosphere. Practically speaking, the sky does have a limit, but how do we know where that limit is? Luckily, there is an answer to this problem. The Karman Line, established in the 1960s, is the internationally agreed upon point that separates Earth from space. Only, it's not so agreed upon. Theodore von Karman originally defined this line as the height at which an airplane could still sustain flight, which he calculated to be about 83.8 kilometers or 52.1 miles above sea level. The World Air Sports Federation, an international record-keeping body, used this line as the dividing point between Earth and space, for the purpose of aircraft and spacecraft regulations. Only, they decided to just throw out Carmont's calculations and put it at 100 kilometers above sea level, because they were simps for Base 10. And then NASA looked at that and said, well, well hang on, that's way too high and decided to set it at 50 miles, which is much closer to Carmon's original calculations, but they were also simps for base 10, so they just threw those two miles out. Basically, if the Carmon line is the international dividing point where the sky ends and space begins, but nobody can agree on where that line is, then we have a real opportunity here. 80 kilometers, 83, 100, screw that. From this day forth, by decree of Team Sky, the new Karman line is now 5 billion miles, and all that space is reserved exclusively for flying Pokemon. And Mighty Enna, if you got a problem with that, well, we might have to have a little, uh, conversation. Cosmo, Professor, my friend, why you gotta do this to me? We're not asking for much here, just a little, uh, statement from you endorsing our new Carmon line. All we're asking for is a little cooperation. But, uh, if you can't do that, then we're gonna have to resort to Plan B. And you're not gonna like Plan B, Cosmo. Because it involves superheating an atmosphere that we removed all the oxygen from using geothermal radiation from big holes that we dug down to the mantle. Do you really want that in your conscience? And thus ends my cover letter for my official application to the Team Sky Science Division. I am confident that I can use my expertise to help Team Sky accomplish their goals for creating a better life for flying Pokemon with a bit of world domination on the side. Please see my attached resume and feel free to reach out if you have any other questions. And 
you know, also I thought I should just let you know, I do have a uh, 100 million polka dollar offer from Teague Magma, so, you know, if you want to lock this one down, you're going to have to make me an offer that I can't refuse. Now, until next time, see you around, polka fans. And a massive thank you to all my patrons, including Alakazam, Aspa102, Big Dog Tie for the Win, Sidian, Gremlin the Goblin, Sherry and Mark, Starjoy, The Boss Killer 94, and Captain Kirby.